Want to know three downsides to purchasing a home in Johnson City, Tennessee? Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Tiffany Watts, a local realtor here in the Johnson City area. If you're thinking about relocating here, then feel free to reach out. All right, let's get started. Downside number one, prices. Home prices are up in the Tri-Cities. So if we go back three years ago to the month of March in 2019, the average sales price was 175,000. And then in the year 2020, the average was 186,000. And then this time last year in 2021, the average sales price was $229,000. Now this year, March, 2022, the average sales price was $265,000. That's an increase of 51% over a three year span. Here is another example. This is what $330,000 could get you in 2019. It's a four bed, four bath, 2,697 finished square feet. It was built in 2007. It has stainless steel appliances, a beautifully updated kitchen. It sold for $122 per square foot. And the buyers also got almost $7,000 in concessions, which, you know, like closing cost assistance. And now we've got this property, which is currently under contract. Another beautiful home listed for $329.9. The big difference in these two homes is the size. This one's finished square foot is 1,610. That's $204 per square foot. Also, another reference point is, say we take the same price per square foot for that 2019 home, which was $122 per square foot. So what could you get today for around the $120 per square foot price range? This home has a lot of space, very close square footage as the 2019 home that sold, uh, which you, reminder, it was 2,696 square feet. Uh, but this home built in 1982, so it's quite a bit older. And you can obviously see the difference though. All right, downside number two, it's a seller's market. It's been a seller's market for quite some time now, for several years, but it's definitely not like it was, say, five years ago. Back then, buyers actually had a really good shot of getting some, if not all, of their closing costs paid for them by the sellers, and maybe even a little off that purchase price as well. Have a home to sell first, no problem, we'll throw that contingency in there. VA, FHA loan, wonderful, get that 100% financing. I can't tell you how many veterans I closed and they paid zero at the closing table. They would make their $500 EMD in the very beginning of the process and you know, pay for their home inspection and appraisal, get all their closing costs covered, sign and walk away with the keys. Those good old days are gone, for now. I feel really sorry for our veterans now. A lot of sellers now don't even wanna deal with VA and FHA loans because they're typically a little bit more strict than the typical conventional loan. And you know, Dave Ramsey says cash is king, and he's right, to a certain extent. Now, with cash buyers, you don't have to worry about the appraisal. But let me tell you, you're not gonna get a good deal or money off the purchase price just because you're a cash buyer in this market. Because I've seen cash deals get passed by because a seller received a higher purchase price offer from a conventional loan. When you've got a buyer who is using a conventional loan and you know maybe they don't have a ton of cash in the bank, but they have enough to cover, say, an appraisal gap then it's totally worth it to a seller 
to possibly get $10,000 extra in their pocket at the end of the sale by choosing a conventional loan over say a cash offer that's lower. And now we've got multiple offers left and right, properties selling for ten dollars to $60,000 more than asking price. And sometimes inspections being completely waived and not having any at all and escalation clauses and it's just crazy. All right, downside number three, low inventory. All right, we're gonna travel back again to 2019 for the month of March. During that time, there were 2,211 homes available for sale. A year later, in 2020, there were 1,641 homes available for sale. And a year ago, in 2021, there were 991 homes available for the month of March. And this year, in March, there were 765 homes available for sale. So from 2019 to 2022, there's only almost one third of the amount of houses available today as there was in 2019. That's around 66% less homes available. And a side note, our average days on the market has also gone down as well. So March of 2019, the average days on the market were 132 days. Year 2020, the average was 121 days. Last year in 2021, the average was 85 days. And this year, March 2022, the average was only 45 days. So in three years, the average days on the market went from 132 to 45 days. And that average covers like all price points, whether it's in the millions or, you know, below $100,000. It's all kind of grouped in as an average. And although right now our average days on the market is 45 days, honestly, the cute homes that are priced, you know, two to $400,000 or more, like it's not gonna sit on the market for 45 days, not even probably 45 hours. And though I may not know for sure what's going to happen with the housing market, now from recent research, it appears that the market is supposed to cool off a little bit. And by cool off a bit, I just mean that prices are expected to continue to rise, but only by a small percentage, not these crazy percentages that we've seen over the past few years. Hopefully the future holds less multiple offers and more options for buyers. Well, that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching.